once you're on the plane and you see the logo, and it does give you a lot of pride to see the product. I actually switched seats to be in line with the propeller. Shipping vaccines to islands in the middle of the Pacific where there is no other way to get that stuff there. They form an essential part of the sustainability of some of these countries. It's very different working in engineering in, in the real world compared to um, textbooks and lectures. I haven't found a single area that I haven't found interest in. If you look back three or four years ago, and propellers were probably seen as kind of old technology, with the pressure now on the sustainability of the planet and to decarbonise, propellers are pretty efficient. You know, so they start to open up new markets for us. We've been studying the market and how it's changed over the period of COVID. One of the things we've seen is that the turboprop aircraft that use our propellers have stayed in the sky, while many of the jets have been grounded. You know, knowing that we're doing something that's uh, proprietary and classified really puts in that no one else is doing this in the world. As a child, I, I was always interested in taking things to pieces. Uh, since I was little, I loved that kind of the product, the, the design, the technology. I love uh, physical things that fly or, or sail, because I started in uh, shipbuilding. But it was just something that I just liked solving problems. And from that point onwards, I realised that how things work was important to me. So engineering of any type, you know, all starts with the STEM subjects. I think when I finished school, I didn't really have a very clear idea of what I wanted to do. So I, I did a degree in chemistry because, uh, because I liked it. I think I struggled a little bit in school, uh, but then later I found out it's just the way I learn is different. Yeah, I'm not very much a theoretical person. So I studied material science at university, and then after that I decided I wanted to apply some of my knowledge to an industrial setting. I was doing a mechanical engineering degree. I didn't really know what I wanted to do with it, and uh, fell into an internship with GE Aviation uh, in Wales, the Wales site there. And from there I sort of fell in love with it, really. Basically I started off with GE. I did my internship in Hamble, GE Hamble. Then from there I got a graduate uh, program, that is the Edison Graduate Program. And I rolled off from that program into manufacturing engineering in Doughty. And then that's how I got in Doughty. Try out different things. If you don't know what you want to do, just try out different areas, different fields. I joined a, a program that was designed to throw you around different areas. And so I've learned and seen different parts of the business. Quite nice being able to go around the entire workshop because now I'm able to get a, a wide experience and actually know everything in the company. My first rotation, I was involved with a uh, research collaboration working on a composite property prediction for abraded materials. Um, and I enjoyed doing that because it was working on kind of cutting edge methods. This is a really exciting time, really exciting time to be in aviation and, and probably certainly the most exciting time since I've been in aviation because the futures are unknown to a degree. This is an incredible business. It's been around for over 80 years, and throughout those 80 years, the, the business has been at the forefront of technology in, in aviation. We were the first to develop and fly a turboprop, as we call them. You don't have to just be purely technical. It doesn't need just uh, you know the world's best nerds. I'm not a very good engineer. I can't design my way out of a paper bag, so I moved across to, uh, to the more commercial side of the, the organisation. We need a lot of people who are very good leaders, very good communicators. Um, uh, and very good organisers and managers, so it's all very important. And it was just about picking a book up and reading. When people say they can't, you can, you can do anything. Composite propellers are going to be uh, used on things like hybrid and electric planes in the future, so I'm really motivated by sustainability, um, and I like the fact that Doughty is kind of looking to the future and looking into ways to make their operations more eco-friendly. So as we look ahead at what we need to do to make sure that there is, a, is that bright, sunny future for, for aviation going forwards, we recognise that we have to, to address that sustainability challenge. You know, there's lots of things where Doughty uh, and GE get involved with the Cheltenham Science Festival. Right, right now you're thinking that, oh, it is such a male-dominated environment. It is traditionally just perceived as a male-dominated environment. But in reality, it's neither male or female. It is what you make of it. So if you are a person who likes solving problems and love innovation, there's nothing male or female about it. You just have to do it. So if you're looking for a kind of variety role and to find what you're good at, to find what really interests you, it's a, you know, it's a great, great place to come and try and find, your, find yourself, I would say. It's a really great feeling, knowing that something you produced that you saw on an almost paper study initially uh, actually gets up there in flight through all the certification aspects and all the testing aspects that go into it, the thousands and thousands of hours. It's really great to see something up there in flight.